because there's uh, the altar. at this time and I also encourage people to read the uh, announcements in the bulletin but I will uh, call Raleigh Bachrader up. Good morning. First a confession. Uh, last week I said that I would not be here today that Tracy and I would be on vacation uh, we've had a change of travel plans, but uh, uh, Tracy and I are going to be in the entrance area of the church selling tickets to the movie Mind Reader. The one and only showing in the Duluth area is uh, Monday, November 7th at the West Theater. Um, Tracy and I have watched the movie in its entirety. Well done. Uh, it's a Christian movie, but it doesn't have that feel of a Christian movie. So it's a great thing to bring family and friends uh, to. But, uh, so we'll be in the back selling tickets. Thank you. I'm Jane Terrio and I'm here to talk about this little green insert on one side that you have. I am a member of Thriving Financial. And we have, I have received a grant of 250 to fill our little food pantry. And I've noticed that it's kind of gotten empty. So by applying for this amount of money, I said I would challenge you, the congregation, to see if you can match that 250. You can either buy groceries or you can give money to the office. And I challenge you to think kind of outside the box so that when you go shopping, you don't shop for yourself. You shop for someone who might be homeless, which means they don't have can openers, they might not have stoves, they might not have microwaves. Some of them are able to go to Quick Trip and get hot water to make oatmeal in those little bags, or 
mac and cheese, to uh, use the microwave there to heat something up. So when you shop, think of not tuna in a can, look for it in a bag. Look for things in a bag. And uh, it's getting cold weather, so maybe if you get peanut butter and jelly, see if you can find jelly in a tube so that the glass doesn't crack. But if you just go and buy, buy for your family, you buy peas and all these things in cans, they may not have any use for them. So think outside what you would buy for home and think if you are living either out of your car or in a very small apartment and try to find cans. There are other things that open, you know, the tops pull off or go around. Look for those things when you give. And let's see if we can't match this 250. We have a place to keep extra food and we'll, have, we'll keep filling that little pantry. And so let's help fill it now for a while for those that need. Thank you. Uh, this is an update on what's going on in the basement. So um, the council, your council is working very hard to get that space ready to rent. And it's a lot of work. Um, both physical and mental. And we do have a, an earnest uh, renter who's anxious to get in there. So what I'm asking you to do is to help clean it up. It's had 10 years of use of 50 kids a day and no thorough cleaning that whole time, just, you know, lick and promise type of stuff. So there's a sign-up sheet in the back. Um, I've divided the work up into rooms. You can do it with a friend, you can do it on your own, you can do it on your own time. But I'd like you to tell me uh, when you're doing it so we can coordinate use of things like vacuums and stuff like that. Um, there's also, uh, we're going to be making Pan Dowdy uh, for fundraiser uh, November 3rd through 5th, so there's a sign up for that, and also an order sheet if you'd like to pre-order. Uh, there's stuff in the narthex about mission of the month, which is mission in medical ministries. Um, and there's uh, a concert coming up. October 27th at the Scott House that is a fundraiser for that too, and there's still a few seats available for that. It's a free concert, but of course we ask for donations. Today, for the post food, let's see, do we have any kids here? No kids. Oh. <laughs> well, anyway, if there are anybody who wants to come up and play your percussion, you're welcome to do it during the post food, but please don't do it during the last hymn, it's not that kind of hymn, but the post loop could stand some percussion. And I've got some uh, special percussion up here, including Mr. Frog. Thank you one and all for the announcements for the life of this church throughout the week. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship and stand as you are able, and we will join in singing our gathering hymn, The Church of Christ in Every Age.
eager to forgive, and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven, and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
joining me this morning is Don Brown, who is a member of the Presbyterian Church over in Carlton. So I'm happy to have him singing along with me this morning. <laughs> Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, 
Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. For Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, yet it my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, living because of his hip. The word of the Lord. Our song today is Psalm 121. Would you please the bold, read the bold print with me? I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of the earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved, nor will the one who watches over you fall asleep. Behold the keeper of Israel, who neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will watch over you when out and you're coming in from this time forth forevermore. The second lesson is from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 through chapter 4, verse 5. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believe, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to construct, instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead? And in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message. Be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. The word of the Lord. beginning with the first verse. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was also a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice 
against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay, along, delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. Grace and peace to you, brothers and sisters in Christ. In modern times, we have come to know that the Oscars are awarded in the winter, and they are the ultimate award ceremony for the best picture, best actress, and best actor. Just as there is an Oscar season for movies, this season of the church year is one where we have heard many stories of people who have some level of faith, some with a little faith, like a mustard seed, and some with persistent faith. And week after week this fall, we have had a season where we are learning the importance of faith. Today's story is the story of a widow with persistence who doesn't lose heart. It sounds like an award-winning performance. Before coming to appreciate the widow's faith, we encounter the supporting actor, the judge. Some might call him the, the villain, per se, if we were looking at the, the storyline. He neither fears God nor respects people. Not the best uh, typecast. I don't know if I would want to be known as the person who doesn't respect people. The unrespected people, the collective, is represented by one person, and that's the widow, whose persistence is annoying to the judge. She ends up receiving the justice she demands. And God is in the lead role and shows that the widow, um, her faithfulness matters, and that the judge uh, doesn't get to write the final chapter of this story. There are many widows in the Gospel of Luke. They don't appear in any other of the Gospels, but beyond just looking at today's uh, gospel reading, I think it's important to step back and look at the theme of the widows in the Gospel of Luke. And if you haven't done that, I encourage you to go back and read on your own and see what you see throughout the book of Luke. But I'll share a little bit about this, these, these um, important people in the Gospel of Luke. Through each of the stories of these widows, we see how they are described as vulnerable, and they are people who Jesus pays attention to in his ministry. In biblical times, being cast as a widow was known in their society as a sign of weakness and one who's on the edge of the community. Yet, time and time again, Jesus tells a different story of who the widows are in their community. He shows them as being prophetic, active, and faithful. Perhaps taking a step beyond the story to look at the sequels or parallel stories of widows in the Gospel of Luke will help us to understand this story that we're hearing today. We hear in the first few chapters of Luke about Anna, a widow, She's a prophet who spreads the good news of Jesus' birth. 
And then in Jesus' inaugural sermon at Nazareth, he mentions the widow of Zarephath, who feeds Elijah from her meager supplies in a famine, and whose son is returned to life by the prophet. An act Jesus replays in, raising, in the raising of the only son of the widow of Nain. Certainly, the widow who gives her lost coins is not only vulnerable, but also a model of generosity. So when we hear the word widow, I encourage you to not think of someone who's vulnerable or on the edge of society, but a model of generosity and faith. All of these women, including the one woman in our current parable, are persistent, they're active, and forceful enough to get the justice that they deserve, even from an utterly unjust judge. Who, but as they receive justice, they are included among the chosen ones of God. Today's widow is persistent in petitioning and in that, we see that she has a faithfulness of a practice of prayer. She hasn't stopped praying. We learn from Jesus that God responds to our prayers with gifts of the Holy Spirit, justice, and the kingdom of heaven. God wants to give the widow these gifts. And in an answered prayer, God responds to the prayer of the widow by taking the place of the unjust judge and ensuring that justice for those who cry out will come through prayer. Some would say that the sign of a movie having a sequel is whether there are unresolved questions at the end of the movie. I don't know if you've been in a movie theater where you see it and you're like, ah, oh, they just ended it this way so we could get a, a, a number two version of this movie. We have, in today's story, one of those stories that it has an unanswered question at the end of the reading. The question looks to the future, and this is our final line of the Gospel reading for today. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Dun, dun, dun. Time for another movie. And a, another story. It is in the Gospel of Luke that we find that there are stories where Jesus will find faith on earth. We may find the beginnings of an answer in the Gospel itself. If we took it and look at, look at it from page to page, we would see story after story that faith is still on earth in the hearts of God's people. A few of the examples in the Gospel of Luke include the woman who anoints Jesus' feet and loves much. It comes in the friends of the person who's paralyzed, who are willing to dig through a roof to seek healing for their friend. It is the woman who's known the bleeding for many years, who touches Jesus' clothes in the crowd and is healed. And then there is the Samaritan leper, whose gratitude turns him back to Jesus, where he falls at his feet in thanksgiving. That was last Sunday's story. So a beginning of the answer to the question appears to be that in the Gospel of Luke, we hear the Son of Man will find faith. But it doesn't come where you would expect it in the normal cast of characters. It comes from unexpected people who are at the edge of community, who know the experience of vulnerability. So if we look at the Gospel of Luke as a guide for us in 2022 here in Cloquet, Will God find faith here in this place, as it was in the Gospel? Who are the people in this community 
who their faith and calling out for justice is casting a light on God's promise that God's justice, the gifts of the Spirit, and the kingdom of heaven will be ours. So take heart, dear sisters and brothers in, in faith. If you find hope in this season, remember to share that hope with others. If prayer seems futile, or that you're not finding that God is hearing you, be persistent, be active, live that faith daily, and know that the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of justice, and the promise of the kingdom of heaven is yours. The question at the end is not whether the Son of Man will find faith when he comes. It's actually a different question. It's where will he find faith? It may not be in the most obvious of places. Whether he finds such faith in action with us is our choice. And I pray that, that we will be people of action people of persistence, and people of faith. Like the widow, may we live with that pers persistence, giving thanks to a God who knows justice for his people. Amen. Please join with me in singing our hymn of the day, Lord of all hope hopefulness.
Grant your followers persistence in proclamation and prayer. Hear us, O God. For air and sky, clouds and sun, that they provide rain to parched land and relief to flooded ground. Renew and restore our polluted atmosphere and empower us to be worthy stewards of creation. Hear us, O God. For judges, juries, and all who work in the judicial system, that they desire wisdom, seek truth, rule with fairness, and have the courage to do what is right. Eliminate oppression and injustice in our criminal just justice system. Hear us, O oh God. For all who are lonely, especially those who have newly arrived in an unfamiliar city or country, political prisoners without recourse to justice, hospital patients without visitors, and any who are ill or grief-stricken. We pray especially for Don, Chuck, Gary, Sharon, Tony, Tom, Kathy, and all those on our prayer list and those we now name aloud or in the quiet of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. For those in our congregation and community engaged in advocacy work, that with the persistence of the widow, they lift their voices in seeking justice on behalf of others. Hear us, O oh God. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O oh God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make these gifts that we have shared in our offering a banquet of blessing, and make us ready to share with all in need, through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all.
shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together, let us join in the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from the evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of your lips, now and forever. Amen.